Hello everyone. <clears throat> Let me tell you about something that has frustrated me over the years, a very small thing, but uh, with it's annoying enough to me with the raw vegan movement, right, and people that are in it. It's annoying enough that people come into this and end up sort of listening to the wrong information and doing the wrong things. And fair enough, that's that's just life, right? Um, that's people. But it's even weirder to me when it's people that have been to the events that I've put on, like the festival, and they've had a week. Sometimes they've come twice, three times. Um, we've made an effort over the years to put them in front of the right, not the right, but really good speakers, I think, that have taught a lot of people like the right way and the good thing and do this lifestyle long term and have like people like Doug Graham, Rosalind Graham, like they've, they've helped way more people than almost anyone else. And actually to do this lifestyle sustainably, they've helped way more people um, and they've themselves been doing it consistently, sustainably for, for many years, staying on a raw vegan diet. And um, for some reason, long term is not maybe sometimes the most interesting thing to people. Like people want short term, quick, f quick fix. You know, people get ill and they want the raw vegan diet 30 days to, to sort it all out. And sometimes it can. Well, sometimes your body can. Uh, but not for everything. And it's better off making a change to your diet before you get unwell, right? But that's that's not what people do generally. But um, people will leave UK Fruit Fest and all the stuff that, and all the stuff we're teaching them there and everything else. And often I see them end up following people that don't do a raw vegan diet. You know, and taking the advice from people that have a have a mindset and a philosophy and a and a approach to the diet that do, didn't work for them and can't really work for anyone else and uh I talk mostly of a few people who are very inspirational to a lot of people like Robert Morse is the main one and people that were kind of in the Robert Morse group and that kind of mindset with often juicing being a big part of it often detoxing cleansing and herbs being a big part of it herbal protocols and all that stuff and um that's never an approach that i've followed or a mindset that i followed and for me the people that i've met that do a raw vegan diet long term don't follow that mindset they follow a mindset that it's a lifestyle and not that it's something to do with cleansing or detoxing or whatever else. And it's not a spiritual thing. Um, although it, it can be a spiritual thing as much as any diet can be a spiritual thing. like Because they're not necessarily connected. But um, it is about feeling better. It's about living life in a better way. It's about feeling better all the time. And loving and loving your body, respecting your body, and 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 all that, and uh, I just think that the detox side of things is way too short term a way of thinking about it. And it's kind of a mistaken way of thinking about it. So it's been it's just been funny over the years. Like I I mean obviously everyone's free to do what they want, but I I've we've specifically sometimes had talks at the festival about like trying to try to encourage people to avoid some of this information um and some of these mindsets and some of these things and i've got i've taught this in courses and i've got it in some books and things and uh what i what i find is interesting i suppose is that people will be it's a great lesson about life like people will be attracted to certain things that don't sometimes don't make any sense Robert Morris has a very big following online and many of those people want to do a raw vegan diet or, or a 
detox diet or whatever, whatever they call it, right? And they want to do that long term and they want to do that for or a fruitarian diet or whatever. And this is a man who's obviously not doing that. That does not stop him having a big following. That doesn't stop him from teaching people how to be detoxification specialists and for people to spend thousand dollars over a weekend or whatever to go and learn from him. And I've got I've got absolutely no um negativity towards him doing that. I think he's he's getting a lot of people excited, interested and and he's sharing the message of fruit to a lot of people. But if it comes to you following it as a lifestyle and if you need to follow it as a lifestyle, his information must go wrong somewhere because he is not doing it as a lifestyle. And why that doesn't matter to people, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why that doesn't matter. But in almost anything else in life, you would think that you would want to follow someone that does the thing. But maybe that's not actually true. If I'm thinking, I'm thinking about going to the gym have you been to a gym class where the teacher was overweight? You probably have been. Sometimes there's someone that doesn't have a particularly good body, like the, some of the fitness instructors, they, they're maybe not, they maybe don't look that good. That doesn't matter. Like they can still teach the stuff. Like they can, they can still to some degree. But if they're saying something different to what the guy, if they're saying the same thing as the guy who's got the physique that you want or whatever, then that makes sense. If they're saying something different, then you've got to ask yourself who's right. You know? And we're sticking with this diet long term. The detoxing, cleansing, juicing, uh, fasting side of it, to me is the side that always seems to produce far more people that don't last doing it a long time. And that, that mindset eventually leads to uh, problems and you're actually better off being like some kind of crazy binge person that eats as much crazy fruit as you like all day long all night wakes up in the morning eat as much fruit as you like those people are more likely to do better and I, I don't necessarily think that, that either of those are the right approach but like really the uh, the idea of Abundance in eating enough is so important because it's so easy to eat way too little. And everyone comes into this and eats way too little all the time. All the time. Every single person eats too little. Not enough. Too, too little calories. Too few calories. People do that all the time. Because they're coming from an eating style that is totally different. Coming from an eating style which is basically... I eat when my body has addictive, uncontrollable urges to eat and I can't stop. And and that's not how we approach eating fruit. Um, I eat when it's uncomfortable to eat. I eat when it's when I feel uncomfortable. I eat when I feel anxious. I eat when I feel like that's that's not what it's about, you know. And fruit is not addictive. Generally, I think tomatoes can be. I think tomatoes have a particular quality about them. And uh, maybe there's some other foods. Maybe there's some other fruits. I don't think durian, people say durian is addictive. Like, no way. People eat durian for a couple of days and then they, don't, they can't be bothered eating it anymore for weeks. That's not addictive. Um, Yeah, there's, there's no addictive fruit. I wish they were. If fruits were addictive, we wouldn't have an issue health-wise. Uh, you can't get people addicted to fruit. So, uh, so it's been funny over the years, as I say, watching people come in, and, and, and I always feel like we're trying to give them the best information, make sure that they leave with the best chance of changing their diet if they want to. And uh, we still don't quite get the message across, right? Still don't quite get the message across. But it's a hard message to take. It's a really hard message to take. You know, change your diet, cut all that stuff out, and you'll be sort of healthier and you'll feel better. And 
and and and that's it you know that might be it that's it well maybe that's not exciting enough for people or they're not at that place yet but it's important enough and they've not got to the point where feeling good is more important than temporary flavors you know for me i got very clear on that one meal that makes me feel not as good for 24 hours but definitely doesn't make me feel good for a couple of hours after it and then i'm still dealing with the digestive effect 24 hours later that is something that i wanted to change in my life i got to a point where feeling good or basically just not feeling less than good like it's not like I, I'm not going around saying I feel amazing all the time, but compared to most people, I think I feel amazing all the time. But I personally couldn't do that anymore. I got to that point where it was important enough for me to commit to this. But for other people, they're not ready or at that point where they want to commit to it yet. And maybe for them, another message is more palatable for them. And so when Robert Moore says something like, well, you know, eat more fruit, but at the end of the day, we're all spiritual beings, so who cares? Like, <laughs> if that, I mean, that seems to be what his message is sometimes. Like, uh, well, we're all spiritual beings, so. And uh, people love the spirituality side of it. And and the raw vegan movement is is quite connected with the spiritual movement. The, the, spirit, the kind of, the new age spirituality. Not ancient, but not the uh, the spirituality of the conventional religions. Not really that spirituality, but New Age spirituality, which is the kind of easy, nice spirituality. You're great. You're amazing. You're perfect. You're God. You're powerful. Like that kind of stuff. People love that stuff. People love that. But does it help people live better lives? I don't really think so. Oh, everything's consciousness. We're all connected. Consciousness, connection. Uh, yeah, so what? What do you want? You know, and like, but people love that. They lap that up, they, they eat it up. And people want to be told, you are love, you are good, you're a good person, you're brilliant, you, you're, you, you deserve love, you deserve everything, you don't have to change, go with the flow. Like, it's so easy. It just appeals to our nature of not wanting to do anything. It appeals to our nature of just want, wishing that the world just comes to us and gifts everything to us. Health just drops on you one day. One day you just wake up magically changed because you took some herbs it would we'd listen if that worked i would do that i'm not like against the idea of taking herbs as some kind of religious belief if that worked it doesn't work it can't work it's it's got no ability to work because it doesn't actually do anything it's your body that does everything and herbs are a form of food. That is all. And food provides us with the basic nutrients we require to build our body. And keep our bodily processes going. And, and continue to run our metabolic systems. And that's all food is. It's fuel. That's all it really is. And yeah, we can add all that poetic, nice, magical stuff to it. But herbs are not some kind of magic thing that does some magic to us if you believe that it does then it makes a difference because there's a thing called the placebo effect if you really believe it and that's the only thing that you're going to believe works then it'll work to a degree and in that case maybe you should do it but what uh, what i believe in is believing really in your body and that actually putting those herbs in can actually be a detriment. Probably a small detriment, but can be a detriment if you decide to take a huge amount of herbs. Because as the natural hygiene approach would suggest, if you can't make a meal of it, it's probably not food. 
doesn't mean you shouldn't have herbs and spices and things. You can do what you like, you know. And it's probably a very limited, small amount of harm or injury it causes to your body. Very, very little. A bit of stress. But, um, but herbs are not ideal food. And the idea that someone goes herbs over apples. Like, apples is where the magic is. You can live on apples. You can't live on herbs. You could live on apples for months, you know, if you wanted to. And uh, and any fruit you could live on for months. And in that process, you would, your body would, um, would be quite happy with that. It's certainly better than a, a lot of what people eat. But um, what can I say, you know, you can only do your best to get a message out there. You can't force people to listen to you. You can't force them to follow you. And I think you would have to manipulate people to get them to follow you. That's the thing. And if I wanted to get more followers and and whatever, get people to do what I said, I'd probably have to make my message more palatable. And and become some kind of... I've, I've considered this, like... Maybe I should become like a new age spirituality guru, like Robert Morse. And uh, maybe when I get older, I'll kind of grow my hair longer at the back or something. You know, I'll just grow all this, the last remaining bits of my hair, I'll grow it all nice and long and white. And uh, have a nice white beard and wear white linen clothing and float in on, on a, you know, on a cloud. And tell everyone you are love, you are love, you're God, you're powerful. And everyone's crying like, yes, I am. <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, so, uh, to me, I don't think he's really doing a raw vegan diet or a fruitarian diet, but he's very much like supportive of the diet, which is great. He supports fruit. And I think that he's a bit shocked that people are actually doing it as a lifestyle. Like, I think that surprises him. I think that up to a certain point, people would come to him, he would get them on fruit for a while, they would get better, and then they would go back to whatever they were doing at prior to that, maybe kind of more of a vegan diet or whatever, and they would kind of stay well, relatively. And and that was what he did. He I don't think he was expecting people to stick to it. You know, I think it's only now that people actually learn to stick to it, and there's people online who, te you know, encourage that and stuff. I don't think back in the day, there was a lot of people going fruitarian because they'd bumped into Robert Morse, but, but maybe there was as well. Um, well, it's all, it's all fun and good, and and uh, he's he's, it's, you know, I started to see his influence a couple of years ago. I go to Woodstock, and like everyone I spoke to would talk about this guy, and like I I didn't really know who he was. And it's always good to learn about someone new, but it seemed like he wasn't actually doing the diet, and I was really confused that people sort of follow him and and um. I did meet him. I, I thought he's talk. He gave a great talk. Uh, but I just think, for, like, and in terms of inspiration, he's very inspiring to people. But in terms of, uh, there's a couple of things. You can't make false promises to people like, oh, it's easy to cure this and that disease. Like, you can't say that. And that's the thing. You become magnetic when you say things like that. To sick people, you become magnetic when you say, oh, yes, we've got the answer and it's easy. Like, that's, to me, morally wrong and criminal. And um, it feels a little bit like he's doing that a little bit. Kind of like Hippocrates do that a little bit. I'm not that guy, you know. Um, someone comes to me about raw vegan diet, can it cure this or that? There's certain things I would say, yeah, you've got a good chance. But certain other things I would never tell people that they can cure it 100%. Like... You just can't. You can't. You can't live a lifestyle of that, that where aspects of your lifestyle were, were disease promoting and de disease creating, 
for decades and decades and just get away with it scot free all the time unfortunately unfortunately like but there's some people that do and they go raw vegan 50 or 40 and they get away with it they manage to reverse things and they do okay but there's some kind of balance to like the life life and the universe and everything and you can't just abuse yourself for a life and expect it to be all changed just because you did you think the diet's very extreme it's not extreme what you were doing before was far more extreme and that's what you got to realize the, the standard diet is a, a very extreme diet a very extreme diet uh, extremely unhealthy extremely stressful to the body um, extremely dangerous and the raw vegan diet is just the normal diet the correct diet that's it not magical diet just correct less disease causing less stressful I mean I, I don't think it's very disease causing but it's, it's much less so that's all I want to say that's all I want to say maybe I want to say more but that's all I'm saying at the moment anyway um, as a, a, a lifestyle wise you need to figure out how to do it long term as a lifestyle if you, if you want if you want to heal mostly your healing is going to take place over five and ten years not three months unfortunately not nine months, not six months, not three months, not one year, two years, five years, ten years. You'll still be recovering. Hopefully you've done most of it in the first in the first short time. But you know unfortunately the diet's not a magic cure. And I've learned that. I've learned that the hard way. Uh, with people that I've seen try and using this diet as a magic cure to all things and it is for some things it's not the magic cure it's just you take out the foods that are causing the problem and and the problem usually res re resolves itself but not all diseases are are 100% to do with your diet and uh, some of them if they are to do with your diet they've gone maybe too far can you take someone that's way into dementia or Parkinson's disease or or Alzheimer's and recover them 100%. Uh, it's probably unlikely, right? Can you prevent people getting it? Let's hope so. Let's certainly hope so. Herbert Shelton had Parkinson's. What does that mean? I don't know. Does it mean that anyone could get it? What the hell was he eating? We don't know. This is a problem. Like, probably, probably wasn't particularly, he probably wasn't a raw vegan, that's for sure. Anyway, thank you for following, watching, and uh, feel free to comment below. Join us for Fruity Friday one night if you like. Join the conversation, fruitfest.co.uk slash Fruity Friday. You can go to Fruit Fest. We will open up the festival soon. We'd love to see you there. And uh, thank you for watching.